So, let's see. Another one is forced or voluntary. And as I already indicated, of course, ethically, we would always uh, tend to say, well, at least for the patient, they should uh, be run according to their own free will, except if they are in psychiatry. Uh, but besides that one, um, there are various kinds of studies uh, in animal models uh, looking at forced or voluntary exercise. The Voluntary exercise is typically of the type that I mentioned. You live in a cage, the cage is connected to a running wheel, and you can either uh, just uh, have your own nice time in your cage and disregard the fact that there's a running wheel, or you can do what the animals practically always do, uh, go into the running wheel and have a little run for a while or a longer run, uh, go back into the cage, etc. Um, if offered this kind of running wheel, practically all animals, unless of course they are severely motorically impaired, would use the running wheel. It's clearly something that they choose uh, to do. So that's the voluntary type. The forced type, well, you already uh, heard about one type, uh, us putting the animals into these restraining boxes and thereby, well, not actually forcing them to move. That's maybe uh, a factor to take into account. But of course, in reality, we put them in a situation where they would almost automatically uh, fight to get out. But actually, are they forced to move? How's about an animal? Just, okay, I went into a box, so that's it. Um, I mean, personally, I get so little sleep that I think if somebody put me into a box for two hours, I would very much appreciate uh, just being able to lie there and have a nice time. So they're not forced necessarily to do so. Uh, the type of forced exercise used in most studies is forced swimming. So you take the animal, typically a rat, some instances a mouse, and you put it into water. And there, I must admit, the term forced gets a clearly uh, different meaning, uh, because obviously you can decide not to do anything. However, that's a fairly suicidal decision, uh, because uh, unless you already know that ethically the experimenters wouldn't let you drown, uh, then you would face the situation, if you do not swim, well, you're going to drown. So that's forced in a very forced way. So studies addressing this have looked at a, usually a combination of running wheels versus forced swimming. And the conclusions from those studies uh, is that, generally speaking, and I can just uh, give you already part of the uh, answer, stress seems to play a significant role, and it looks as if the forced is actually not a very good idea. The voluntary is the type. And maybe because stress is associated with the forced type. If you're put into water and you have to swim, this is stressful. And if you're put into a little box and you might have to fight your way out, uh, well, they might have seen all those horror movies about being buried alive, etc. So uh, anyway, the effect of stress is very relevant in these cases. So let's see, what can stress do to BDNF? Well, these are the controls, and these are animals in which, or rather these are actually slices from animals. These are uh, tissue samples uh, in which there is a study of BDNF when cortisol or corticosteroid is applied in various concentrations. And the more cortisol you apply, the less BDNF. Cortisol, uh, I take it everybody knows this, but generally speaking, if you are encountering stress, you activate something called the HPA axis. Uh, it's an axis basically starting out in the brain, actually starting out in the rest of the brain, eventually affecting the hypothalamus, uh, the hypothalamus affecting the pituitary, and then the uh, adrenal glands uh, to produce cortisol. This is part of our stress response, this is a very useful response, actually uh, putting us uh, on alert to be able to uh, fight uh, or flee or whatever. These are some of our stress reactions. Uh, a high level of cortisol will reduce your immune uh, defenses. Again, one could say this is not very good news for many scientists and many clinicians who are on a constant level of stress. 
and with the new financial circumstances probably even more, uh, which means that our immune system is almost chronically suppressed and so we get ill more and the rest of our colleagues will have to run even faster and get more cortisol, etc. Uh, so in short, why is it a good idea that our body is equipped with this? Well, simply because we are designed not to be under chronic stress. Stress is a very, very adaptive response if it's applied in an acute situation where we have to manage an acute threat and get out of it and get out of stress. The fact that your immune system is partly switched off for half an hour is completely irrelevant to your health, uh, or at least close to, uh, but if that's going to happen for a long period of time, of course, this is a lot worse. So cortisol will have a lot of negative uh, consequences uh, if it is going on for a pro <coughs> sorry, prolonged period of time, uh, reducing your, for instance, immune reactions and reducing your production of BDNF. So actually your brain is suffering if you are under chronic stress. You have a high cortisol level and your production of BDNF and thereby the plasticity and for that matter survival of your brain neurons will suffer as a consequence. So generally speaking, being under stress and probably being forced to swim or put into a little restraining box, etc. That's, that's stressful, uh, is going to have a lot of negative consequences on your BDNF. Uh, and also on various plastic processes, as I hinted, here are some studies in which electrophysiological responses are studied uh, under circumstances of control here and under uh, circumstances of cortisol alone and cortisol with a co-application of BDNF. And as you can see, uh, the electrophysiological results are worse. You have the same here. I just showed in, in the slope here of the uh, changes. These are learning-associated electrophysiological changes. When you have cortisol alone, there's a clear suppression. But if you have cortisol and then artificially apply, these are slices, so the application externally of, of BDNF is more easy, uh, you have, again, a return pretty much to normal. So cortisol is bad news. So exercise uh, after stress is here uh, a situation which is studied. Here you have the normals. Uh, these are exercising animals, the level of BDNF. Uh, here you have those that are passive and stressed and you have a clear reduction of BDNF. This is according to what we just saw. But here are some that are stressed to the same level but also exercised. And what is interesting here is that they actually come back to something which is at the same level as before. It's actually higher uh, than before. So here exercise can reverse some of the consequences of stress. Uh, this might be a little hint that there is a slightly more complicated interplay between stress and exercise than you might uh, other, otherwise believe. But generally speaking, if you have a look at the literature, exercise should be voluntary uh, because you could avoid stress. But remember this one. Now, these were stressed. They were very stressed. And nevertheless, they were stressed, they were early, and it was therapeutically very efficient. And this is not just a one-off. I do not have the graphs yet because we are still running the experiments. But I can tell you that this treatment also works in other uh, post-traumatic rehabilitation paradigms. So it's not just with this particular task. Other tasks show the same kind of effect of the early restrained uh, procedure. We also know that if we measure BDNF in the hippocampus of these animals, uh, there is a significant increase in the BDNF level in spite of this being early, in spite of this being clearly associated with stress. Uh, I cannot tell you about BDNF in the rest of the brain. We are not through analyzing this yet. Uh, so if I had got the invitation a little bit later, we could have mentioned something about the rest of the brain. Or if the reorganization of the dates would have been even more radical, I could have told you. But anyway, right now I can only tell you that with the early application of this procedure, it is shown now with several methods that this is indeed therapeutic and it is inducing BDNF uh, increased levels of BDNF in the hippocampus 
Um, it might be doing so in other brain regions, time will tell. We are also looking at what happens if we use this procedure later on. If we give the late application, uh, again, we would have had to move the course a little bit more radically if I could, should give you those results uh, some weeks and I can tell you. So anyway, we are actually not quite alone in casting a little bit of doubt on very <clears throat> on whether or not uh, it is so negative to have the stress factor. Here are some results from another lab. Uh, they are using a stroke method. We had mechanical injury to the hippocampus. These are uh, running a stroke uh, method. And this is how much of tissue is actually destroyed with various treatment, treatments. You have the control level here. Of course, nothing uh, has been uh, taken here. Um, and here you have a forced exercise after stroke. You can see here that relative to the untreated level here, which is just animals getting the stroke, no treatment at all, forced exercise reduces the volume rather drastically. This forced exercise is actually of a third type. These animals are on a conveyor belt. They are on uh, a belt, so basically uh, the floor underneath their uh, feet uh, is moving, so you just have to run in order to keep up. This is pretty much what almost all the fitness centers are doing for humans. Um, there is, however, a slight twist to this, because in this case, if it's the forced version, if you're doing what some of those exercising humans uh, would be doing, sooner or later just let it go, and you move back, then at the end of it, you get an electric shock. Um, so if you are taken back, you're not running fast enough, you're going to the end of it, you get an electric shock to your pores. Um, that's the force uh, aspect. So of course, ow, and you're running a little bit uh, further. So you're running and running and running uh, in order to avoid that shock. Uh, in the non-forced version, which we are going to get to in a minute, there is no electric shock, uh, and they're just in a running wheel, running in their usual way. And let's see uh, forced versus non-forced. Here you have a very clear therapeutic effect of the forced version, of the shock version. And here you have the consequences of the non-forced version. There is no therapeutic effect in this case at all. Now, could it be that the shock in itself, I mean, Strange thought, of course, but of course it's tempting. Could it be that the shock itself is actually therapeutic? So they did, uh, and I know what the faces look like when I tell this, uh, they just gave shock to some animals. Uh, inescapable shock, there was nothing to do about it, and here you see what happened. So that actually made the whole situation a little bit worse. Of course, that part in itself would not have surprised anybody. They would have said, Big deal, you give them shock, it's stressful. Cortisol goes up, BDNF goes down, and the infarct size grows. So that's no big surprise. No, but what is interesting is, if you take this shock and add to this exercise, you get a therapeutic effect. There is some kind of interaction. Now, could it be that the shock make them run more? I mean, it could be that whenever they get this series of shocks, they actually run more. The shock makes them run a little bit more. That has been tested, and you have there here, uh, how much is the infarct volume, and how far did they run? Uh, they are the voluntary ones and the forced ones, and it turns out that actually the voluntary ones ran further. They ran more than those under forced conditions. So it's not a dose response relative to the fact that, for instance, shock would make them run more. No, they ran less, but had more of a beneficial effect. So they didn't run as fast, as far as the others, but they still have the beneficial effect.